Professor Ashton, uh, very sorry. I think uh, Ibu Titing <laughs> have a technical problem. So uh, for the first time, I, I will uh, give some time for Professor Anok Mariani as our head of Stia Paria Pari uh, to give a short welcoming speech. Time is yours, Professor Anok Mariani, please. Okay, terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih Bu Nova, terima kasih uh, buat partisipan yang hadir pada kesempatan ini. Uh, selamat pagi dan salam sehat semua. The Honorable Lecturer and all the participants in this event of International Short Course Russia Community and Tourism Sustainable Development with the term challenges for tourism. Thank you for attending our event and as we I wish we are healthy. I would like to appreciate my gratitude to our speaker from National Institute of Development Administration, Thailand, Associate Professor and Aston PhD. Thank you for spending your time to share your experience through a participant in this event. This event is collaboration between Stiparia Pari Bandung and Eurasia Japan. This is an prop and Aston will resume sustainable development post COVID-19. I think this term is very interesting because we know during a uh, pandemic, the tourism dropped or dropped drastically. All destinations, we hope post pandemic tourism can be raised and tourist mobility return to normal. Through this short course and guest lecture from Ms. Eston, we get solution to increase tourism especially uh, lift up sustainable tourism in Indonesia and the other countries in the world. Therefore, once again, I would like to thank you for your particip participation and I do hope all participants listen well and enjoy full learning with this webinar. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm so sorry it was a technical problem from N, from N. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, Professor Dr. Nok Mariani for the welcoming speech. And now this is time for us to listen to the presentation of the fortune session. But before that, I would like to read a short profile from the speaker, the associate from Anne Suari Ashton PhD. Let me uh, start screen about her. All right. Okay. Prof. Anne now is Associate Dean for Administration Graduate School of Tourism Management from National Institute of Development Administration, Thailand, and her PhD in Hospitality in the School of Tourism University of Queensland, Australia, in 2007 until 2010. And also she is active in some editorial board members for journal, like Chief Editor of Journal of International Anti-Tourism Graduate School of Tourism Management, National Institute of Development Administration. And also, she is very productive in research projects like held by Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research, and Innovation. And when I see the, her uh, biodata, she has also full of uh, achievement and also has expertise in awareness tourism development, spiritual tourism development, destination branding development, hotel restaurant co-branding, human resources management in the hospitality industry. And the other achievement is in paper work, publication, book, and journal. And the topic today will be about wellness, tourism, sustainable development post-COVID-19. This is a very uh, interesting topic. Hopefully, uh, all participants can enjoy and also prepare the question because Prop N will be happy to answer or respond to the questions. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Associate Prop N Suare Eston PhD. The time is yours. Prop N, so sorry. yes. Okay. okay, thank you so much. First of all, uh, so what do you have from Thailand? And uh, it is a very great honor to recognize my uh, expertise area. And uh, we've been talking together so so long time with Titing, and I think she probably know very well about my um, uh, research area and also my lifestyle. For the last uh, three or four years, I have been doing research in uh, wellness tourism, and also now you know so 
different outcome from different project under wellness tourism had been uh, written in uh, uh, book chapters and also in the publication and along the way. And I'm very glad today that I'm very glad that I, I have opportunity to share those current research and also about my lifestyle of doing as a wellness. So thank you so much for the very um, deep detail introduction about my background. And uh, actually I, I am Thai, but I've been living in overseas for 15 years and have some experience in, in uh, research and in life of doing research as well. So hopefully today I uh, can share some of those experience and current research to all the young junior and all the colleagues. So just let's say I am sharing, not teaching. So, and I'm humble to accept any comments that I can go to improve my research area and about, you know, for the better tourism sustainability and especially about focusing on our wellness. So, um, May let me let me start that by sharing my uh, PowerPoint. So okay, okay. Please let me know if you can see my PowerPoint now. Yes, we can see. Okay, yes. thank you so much. All right. So as we today, that I'm so excited. You know, when I ask uh, uh, teaching that who is will be our audience and uh, you know what topic that I can share under wellness tourism which is exactly what I'm doing now, you know. So I have uh, uh, a 10 project under wellness tourism in different topics. For example, aging about retirement activities for wellness and uh, talking about adventure tourism and yoga tourism and spiritual tourism, which is all under wellness tourism. So um, I, I was so uh, honored to be, to be, to be honest, you know, I, I really honored to be here. Thank you so, so much to giving me opportunity teaching. Thank, uh, thank you to you too. Uh, okay, the topic today, I would like to talk about the wellness tourism sustainable development post COVID-19 and the next new normal. Um, as you already know that I'm from Thailand, I work in the uh, NIDA, we call NIDA a short one, National Institute of Development Administration. Just to add up a little bit of my uh, university background, uh, NIDA is one of the first postgrad university that uh, established by our late King Ramanai. Uh, we just celebrate our 50, 50, 56 year on the 1st of August. No, sorry, 1st of April. So it's the only postgrad that we have, uh, why is moving? That we have master degree and PhD only. And it's a government university and everyone think that is private, but actually our government university is only one in Thailand, uh, only two in Thailand. I think we have only master and PhD. So, uh, we focus firstly on the public administration, and after that, we uh, expand the faculty in our university, or total 11, you know, 11 faculty and one um, research center. Our school is only 10 years, but we've been recognized uh, as a, a, by TED Core in the National World Standard Curriculum and that based on different uh, factors that to receive that certificate. So I just want, would like to inform and acknowledge my university. All right, so for the outline today, I would like to cover first is about the post pandemic trends and some of the development, especially in Southeast Asia, what a unique geography that we have that related to well-being and can be developed wellness, sustainable tourism, and how we can apply sustainable development goals to a wellness destination tourism. The purpose of wellness, and I will propose some of case study that I have uh, conduct last three years, only some example. I think this is if every project might be, we have over the time, maybe next time we can extend. 
Um, and recently about my um, uh, experience, I explore in Nepal, you know, talking about the uh, adventure tourism and wellness. And I will show some of the case study that how can we develop in different activities into a wellness sustainable tourism. Um, so, so the post pandemic, as we know, you know, that is disrupt, disrupt us. We are already now in the new normal time, in a new normal life. And after the world back to normal, I think we have to adapt ourselves again, you know, into the normal previously that we have in our life, but it will be in different way. I'm sure now we all prepare about that. And I'm very sure that academic around the world, especially Southeast Asia, we already ready, but we just need to put together. And I'm sure that what we have do, what we have done today, it's a very, very good uh, to start our work together. We cannot work alone. We cannot go alone. We need to be hands in hand and develop this together. So that the trend, you know, we will talk about the outdoor spacing. We have IT play important part in the wellness tourism. And again, we still need to be realized on sustainable and uh, authentic environment. Some new amenity for our tourism and um, uh, product and services. And of course, the ma majority is everywhere is concerned about health, well-being in a destination. First of all, that, you know, you, you maybe realize that aging society and wellness activities is become part of everyone talking, you know. So as you see the people live longer, way of life is changing, you know, healthy food are demand, wellness activity development need to be put in place in everywhere. And um, I think including in, in Indonesia as well, you know, well plan of how can we get more travel, but still be healthy. If you see from the statistic of demographic chip from aging society, the uh, birth rate is decreased and then the people live longer and the next four or five years, we will have more people retirement and ability to ex expand in um, a top quality product and service. If we know how to capture this group, stakeholders, new uh, hotel and tourism, like the student who are sitting here, you will be our future. You will be our best excellent service provider. However, we have to understand about what is a trend. It will be changed from when I was younger. When I was younger, I was working in the hotel industry as a director HR in the ACCOR group. No hotel, hotel, you know, like um, five-star hotel in Thailand some uh, work in uh, Brisbane, you know, in Australia. So those uh, service and product we provide for them totally will be different from now. I think if I have to go back to work in those industry again, I still have to learn something new the same time as your um, education that you are pursuing today. So demographic is totally changed. As you will see from this statistic, you know, so the uh, 1.6 billion and among this group, senior over 65 of age presented in older than 90 years. And as you can see now, the people who are age 50 to 60, considering 10 years ago, 50 to 60 is totally different. The people know how to maintain themselves, how to look after themselves, and, and that it's come from how to eat, how to live, and how to participate in the activities. And that the new service provider need to understand and provide the right thing for them. And uh, work-life balance. More and more people nowadays, you know, they try to think that life too short, I think as well from, from myself. And we need to work, but we need to find our leisure time, make our life happy, you know, so the joy force of pandemic and the climate have accelerated this trend. And I believe that, you know, people are nowadays work at home. 
perhaps maybe more productive than going to the the uh, office. But in some part, it maybe create some difficulty. You know, I understand some of many of us here. My colleague is a lecturer. You know, teaching in the on site might be better. But you know, for the business people, mainly they need to have a good uh, place to work. In Thailand, you know, we have one of the companies said, actually, I thank to the pandemic, my company selling painting, you know, the, everyone is uh, income going down, but my company is increasing because the people try to make their home into the office. They have to renovate their house. In the old day, they have to go to work every day. They don't bother about making a house is nice, you know. So this kind of thing that, I, I, I see the positive side of the post-pandemic. So work-life balance, it's come in very important part for people, including the educator, including all the business. Um, and also the, they have a research, you know, talking about the well-being. And the people recognize that, you know, since the end of the massive experiment, I almost 90% in us, and this is the, the project. Workers have either moved to a shorter working hour and gain the right to do. I Eisen Lang second global paving the way. Before, you know, this is some example. Uh, more and more people are joining the gym. As I can see, based on from my experience, and also this is from the global wellness uh in 21st of september you know last year they're doing some uh, research and they found that more and more people are looking for to maintain themselves to join the gym or even not join the gym you know try to get out and make themselves become uh health well well-being uh one one for instance you know even look at from my family when I go back home you know some of my cousin and my sister brother they don't even care and then gain their weight, you know, they have big, you know, big uh, problem with the health. When, when I go back again, more than, I think more than 50% of the family, they look healthier. And when, when we ask them, you know, they feel that if they feel unhealthy, they will get in trouble more easier with the pandemic. And that's the starting point. So the evidence in the hotel in Thailand as well, some of the study from my student, both PhD and master degree, they found that in the hotel that turned the section of fitness into a real major uh, service for the guests. The people going there, they're looking for a class, yoga class, or you're looking for the gym and training and something. We have that facility already, but nowadays, they even more, you know, they used to have a just temporary yoga teacher in the, in the hotel, but now they put them in full uh, contract because that the high demand of the people. And that one example of the my student study said uh, more aging people are uh, demand for that. They go out for a couple of days from Bangkok. They join the yoga class. They join the healthy food cooking. They do some activities. They're talking. They're doing some short meditation and then they return to Bangkok. And this is where it to start because that we don't have international. And then when domestic start to demand, we are selling more package about health well-being and also in the, in the, in the fitness center. As you can see some of the statistics here that increasing. And um, so that I, firstly, I focus on the Southeast Asia. Why is that? Firstly, I think that for my study, the attribute to develop wellness destination in Southeast Asia is a more uh, successful, but it doesn't mean investor not successful. Firstly, I think that unique of the geography in Southeast Asia are already there. We just know how to put theory into practice together. We have very, very unique resources, you know. So in my opinion, I, I, I wrote one book chapter. It will be published sometime next year, but I have put some uh, uh, content in this, in this slide. Uh, I think you will be very, very first to hear about that based on my, my research as well. 
So why Asian country is more popular for the wellness? Firstly, I think because religion, you know, people daily life in the Asian country are most connected into body, mind and soul and spirit due to our tradition, our culture, our religion, and every single day life, you know, we all concerned about more serious about karma, about the way of life. And that is the core concept of developed wellness. Wellness, our most important thing is focus on not only good physical fit, but also about my body spiritual retreat. Core value and belief system integrated more emotional and feeling of morality for the uh, um, factors to develop wellness tourism. I done some research and I found several countries have a unique resources. So for example, you know, in China, um, the unique and famous, it can be Chinese medicine, you know, acupuncture or about the Qigong, about or other Chinese um, exercise. So most of this kind of unique, it doesn't come from recently, but it been in the country for years. So it in their life, you know, so they can bring this to be sustainable and wellness. Sorry. And um, it's unique and we can, also bring this to develop and to make it sustain and become culturally sustainable and also use this a unique healing process for our health well-being in life not about curing not about sickness but it's about preventing and maintain about that in um apart from china i found that some research you know they're talking that the policy and regulation of health, wellness, tourism in China since, you know, 2016. China National Tourism Administration, you know, they're doing some uh, health, well, wellness, tourism, and then they, they, you know, issue or support policy and, and kind of promote the wellness tourism as from this table. Um, apart from that, in India, you know, India is one of a destination that famous for especially about religion and about uh, spiritual retreat. You know, in Thailand, when we talk about Buddhist uh, uh, religion, we also, you know, want to go to India. So India also uh, have uh, resources. They can promote that it's better. And then also they can uh, use so many, many destinations that is uh, famous for, for Buddhism, you know, and also it can be developed as a spiritual tourism. As I mentioned, you know, spiritual tourism is not necessarily have to be uh, religion, but it relate, related to non-religion uh, spiritual tourism as well. Um, one of the world famous, you know, record in the youngest one, they call Reiki. Reiki is one of a uh, spiritual tourism healing to release the stress. So I think it's um, the founder of this Reiki, I think it's come from Japan, you know, so, but it's been spread around the world. This is one of example of the activities. Sri Lanka, as you will see that go back to have a look, Sri Lanka has a high potential to develop as wellness tourism destination. It is another country that promote regarding Ayurvedic favor. They promote their destination as a wellness, as using their uh, ingredient or their food or some kind of the herb medicine integrated into the, the food. And then they promote that as a destination of a wellness to recover body, mind, and soul as well. Apart from Sri Lanka and another destination that also heavily promote in their wellness is Jeju Island, you know, so they have uh, healing nature and healing meditation, beauty and spa, you know, as Jeju Island is, uh, you know, it's a volcanic country, you know, that had been have a rich um, resources and destination and still very conservative. So they also doing a wellness destination promoted for the tourists to go there and participate. 
Another country is yin and yang, Vietnam. They also use their five elements of Vietnamese cuisine to promote their wellness destination. They use yin and yang as a, a famous or healthiest food Vietnamese. You know, it have it includes that five elements, metal, wood, water, fire, and earth. They bought into the Vietnamese cuisine, you know, and, and if everyone try the, the Vietnamese food, they will have a lot of herb and, and uh, vegetable in that. So the country use this concept to promote their destination as a wellness destination. Of course, in Nepal, uh, recently I visited Nepal for one month doing my uh, yoga teacher course, and I, I, I qualified to be a yoga teacher as well. But the interest about that, I also doing some uh, research project, interview those people who participate in the yoga school, and there are some results, you know, so maybe they will put get together soon. But Nepal is one of uh, most famous uh, because they have, of course, everyone know that Mount Everest, you know, and, and it's a Buddha birthplace, as they claim. And there are some many evidence that support destination, wellness, sustainable for the people who are going there for to recover, to maintain and explore their life. The country still have a uh, conservative, you know, uh, you go out from the countryside, they still have dirt road. Many, many, you know, if you like um, bitumen road and everything had been done and that, that Nepal is still have many, many things to develop. But in my opinion, that the conservative and the sustainable is still there, but, you know, they like that way. When I get there, I feel that it's so rich destination for wellness, especially spiritual. There are many arsom and many yoga training school in, the, in those uh, area that can cater for the people who are willing to do that. And uh, also about the uh, physical fit, adventure, you know, the people want extreme. One, one thing that the tourists want is how can they get memory, memorable experience for lifetime to go uh, have experience in Nepal by trekking on the Himalaya, one of the achievement. And also you learn from the original school of the yoga and meditation. Uh, apart from Nepal, another country I found that is Bhutan. Bhutan is a country has having significant advantage, advantage of resources for wellness destination. The development has introduced well-being policy, you know, recently they call cross-national happiness into the nation plan. They have some unique resource. You can go for meditation and you can go for the a Buddhist practitioner in Bhutan. Uh, as you if, if you if you ever know that Bhutan is a country that ban all the cigarette, they try to keep the country to be sustained as much as you can. And recently I do some research. The country banned to people to marry with foreigner, you know, but I know maybe this one not not um, unethical, I don't know, but the, 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 the information that we learn from that, they just want to keep the country like eco-tourism destination, but now they're still closed. But the rich culture of the country, it serves as a very good wellness destination due to the way of the leader, you know, the way of the country geography and uh, the unique of the resources and environment that support to be a wellness. Because wellness destination is about nature, it's about sustainable, it's about peaceful, it's about live in nature without any other modern thing to disturb, disturb them. So that uh, after that, you know, so apart from the geography of the country that can serve as a wellness destination, we can do some other study more if, if you like, you know, so, so that how can we make the SDG or we call sustainable development goal and apply into tourism sustainable destination and selling as a wellness destination for the tourists. So when we do a wellness destination, that's mean that the people who are not wellness cannot enjoy that. The main reason is we want all those people who don't realize or who, who, who don't have time 
they can absorb about wellness in their life automatically when they go to join with the wellness uh, package in the other country or in within the within the country. So that I use these six essential elements to deliver the SDG. I'm talking about, you know, you when you will develop, you need to think about people, you know, to ensure healthy life, knowledge, and not only about normal people, but we focus on women and the children as well must not be left out. Dignity, you know, we need to help each other to end up the poverty, create the equal right and prosperity to grow strong, inclusive information and economic. Nowadays, you know, many, many countries had business, you know, going down and the people are suffer. How can we make them uh, to recover, but be sufficient? economy philosophy, like in Thailand, we use that. And we slowly recover, but perhaps it, the way of develop economy might be changed from the past. Uh, justice, you know, to promote safe and peaceful. How can we live together peacefully? Society and a strong institution. We need to work together, collaborate, partnership, create global solid solidarity for sustainable development as we are trying to do now. And of course, the planet. We need to protect our ecosystem and we need to keep it maintained. One person cannot do that, but we have to uh, help each other. So the basic foundation of six element of the SDG and how can we take that into a wellness destination development? Tourism sustainability approach post pandemic through wellness tourism development. You know, as you can see, wellness tourism destination sustainability, how can we do uh, a planet better? Protect our planet is wellness. We need to be used the, the main element to develop is about be in nature, live in a peaceful. So wherever you will build your resort for, for wellness, you need to create some kind of more tree, you know, environment have to be in a nice peaceful, so it's it impossible that you will destroy rather than you more create, more plant the tree. You need to end poverty. It means that, um, I will tell later in, in, in the slide, we're talking about the wellness are going more and more into the community. Local wisdom, we use that to integrate as a product for the wellness. We make sure the local life have good quality. You know, you can live in the harmony. You have to support by the government, you know, the stakeholders. For example, here, wellness attribute. Firstly, you need to think about five attributes of the wellness, including physical well-being, mental well-being, social well-being, spiritual well-being, and emotional well-being. And also the segment that we need to focus. We have a millennium, active aging, and peer retirement. So millennium people is those who are born between 1980 to 1990. Or if you talk about now who is millennial like Gen Y, the person who are in generation Y or millennium will be aged between 25 to 41. If you uh, calculate the age in 2022, as active aging, like I said, 50 plus is the, is the age that will be majority with the retirement. So how can we make them uh, uh, join the wellness destination tourism? So this is what we will focus. And then, you know, give the role of SDG, take the skill and knowledge. We need to teach stakeholders more, especially community. One of my study, we found that local community are willing to have tourists there, but they don't know how to do it. They don't have the skill, they have the resources. Some of them know about, for example, like Thai massage. People learn from in the old day, you know, they are just like a intelligent way. You know, they have, they have a taste of knowledge, the skill, a, a hidden talent. But when we will turn those into the uh, um, tourism product and wellness product, they don't know how to manage that. So the most important thing as we are sitting here, educator, lecturer, researcher, and the, the student in the postgrad or undergrad, you need to give them knowledge and skill about that.
and then they can develop together and then they can have some income and become sustained. So let me describe a little bit about what is a wellness tourism mean and what is the wellness definition. Basically, I found that wellness definition is about a lifestyle oriented toward optimal health and good, good feeling. It's well-being, body, mind, and soul have to be united. It is an active lifestyle. It's guaranteed your health, happiness, and then you have your own self-actualization. Wellness tourism, on the other hand, is mean that a journey whose main goal is the achievement of balance, harmony of personal well-being, especially they want to be fit in their physical, they can maintain the mental. When you have crisis, you can deal with the crisis. You have emotional, not be negative. Always try to find the good thing in every situation. Social interaction that they can be part of the society. They can do some volunteer. They can be benefit. So make them have feel, feel uh, uh, good in themselves. Of course, if you don't have spiritual retreat, nothing we can be healthy. We have our dirty clothes, we wash that. If we have dirty mind, you know, how can we do that? So my study said that the most important thing to uh, retreat spiritual is meditation, be in the society and peaceful, you know, stay with yourself. You think about your um, realization about life, you know, so I'll have some example later. This is my purpose about the activities, wellness activities. If we will go to read a lot, a lot of journal article and many people talk about the thing, but it does not conclude and make you more confusing. You know, what is this wellness is about? You can be said, oh, wellness is spa. Some people even said that, uh, Professor Anne, is wellness is about only for the luxury people life. Wellness means the people who have money. You can go to be in the nice resource. You live in a five-star hotel by the sea, 60, 60, 360 degree uh, seeing view, and then you enjoy your spa and massage with the luxury food. Actually, in my term, I argue that wellness is not just for luxury or rich people. It can be for people who have low income to high income, people who have no degree to high degree, or from all kinds of people, it's, they can have wellness. So the wellness concept from my theory and my purpose is I classify activity into four activity that you can join. The first one you develop that in terms of spa, beauty, and therapy, which is includes, for example, you will provide spa bath, you have hot spring, you have massage, you know, therapy, some other therapy, for example, like uh, doing in, within, the, within the spa bath, you know, and all acupuncture. The second activities for wellness is uh, develop from sport, leisure for health, not competitive. But if that competitive lead to health, that I will regard that this is for wellness. But you do sport and you heavily train yourself. You put yourself in a very straight to get that gold medal, to get the uh, certificate to, to hunt for the money. I don't regard that as a wellness. I regard as that is a business. So for the second activities for wellness, I propose that in anything to do with sport, you know, you go to pay tennis for health, you go to swim for health, you go for do adventure, adventure for health. So this uh, sport for health is include with adventure tourism, uh, long distance running for health, trail running, and leisure or recreation. The third one activity is I'm talking about provide some healthy food. In my study, I propose that we call slow food tourism, and I will explain later what slow food. We have organic farm. We, we point out some festival or event that based on healthy food or related to food in the ethnic food or whatever and have to be healthy. Uh, street food, doing some study, but it can be turned into the healthy food. 
of course, the last one that is talking about herbal medicine for health improvement. So these four activities, it can be developed and it can be offered to the uh, tourism, to the tourists, and especially the next new normal. But you can choose, you know, which one that you're comfortable, which one you want to join, which one you want to develop. And there we have a deep uh, strategic management and practical purpose in each of the activities. Um, wellness activity case study. So I'll, I provide some of the case study. You know, for example, we're talking about adventure and leisure activities, wellness for sustainable tourism. Uh, recently, like as I mentioned before, you know, I've been to um, um, Nepal and I went to trekking, walked to up to the um, Himalaya, the call Madi, um, Madi uh, top peak, 4,500. So is that part of adventure? But I regard that as uh, adventure wellness tourism. And I would tell that what is different. So the main thing that we doing wellness tourism, adventure wellness tourism, that just we want to achieve our theory we call well-being of eudaimonic experience model. What does it mean eudaimonic? If we ask ourselves, we are sitting here, what is your self-actualization? Or what can I ask another question that, what makes you happy the most? If you have that certain thing, you will be die peacefully or you will live peacefully or you can be proud of yourself and that your uh, self-actualization. So well-being is about eudaimonic theory. It means that the people who have experience, which is completely feeling fulfillment of life, as well as achievement during and after traveling. Eudaimonic experience is a composed of uh, six attributes. Firstly, if you have your own self-acceptance, you have purpose in life, you have positive relationship, you have environmental mastery, autonomy, and personal growth. So this detail I will explain in the next uh, slide, I think it's, oh, it, it will be next slide, okay? So that my case study, I'm doing adventure tourism, definite, uh, uh, adventure tourism as a wellness by using eudaimonic six element to determine your wellness. So adventure tourism, if in your opinion, you maybe think, oh, Professor Ann, is adventure is dangerous then. Adventure is about climb the tree, it's about climb the rock, it's about bungee jump, it's about do something in danger. But I argue that adventure tourism for wellness is, will be a new concept. As I have done some research, nothing yet had been written properly about using adventure tourism as a wellness activities, but there is a way to do it. So actually adventure tourism is about a leisure activity, can take place in unusual, exotic, remote or wilderness destination and tend to be associated with high level of activity by participant, most of that is in outdoor. Millington defined as uh, in that. So this gives some of example that I have adventure tourism in Nepal. I, I do tracking in the snow time, you know, maybe mid of uh, winter, very cold. And also I'm doing that as we call yoga tracking adventure tourism trip. I walk there with the group of the yoga people who study in the school and uh, we so enjoying that, you know, so people might be said, oh, that dangerous. So that the adventure tourism can be separate in hard and soft adventure. First of all, I just like you see as Mofia a little bit of when I was up there, when we reached the top 4,500. How can that be? Okay, 
So when you see, you know, some of you, oh, how can it be wellness, right? So I think it depends on how can you set your personal goal. Like I said, eudaimonic experience, part of the uh, well-being in life is you achieve your personal goal. Everyone go not the same. Some of them might be okay, you have to read to whatever level, but for some reason, some people said, if I can get to the base camp, or if I can walk, you know, that is my, my personal goal. For my uh, definition, I don't mind that whatever level of the, the walk you walk up to, but it's about you evaluate yourself. How can you achieve by your own ability? If you can achieve that, that you reach your personal goal. And this is about the well-being in life. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, I, will, I will give you some example, you know, tie up the adventure tourism. They can be hard and soft. Hard adventure is about uh, maybe take a high risk, but in terms of wellness, we will have the way how to prevent risk. We will need to provide some expert or we will need to have people who have knowledge uh, when you go on the, on the trip. Uh, it can be danger, but it, we, if we know, have knowledge, if we prevent properly, that it's not going to be cause of life. So the activities can acquire the extreme commitment and superior and sometimes it have to be specialized skill. Uh, soft adventure tourism are those activities that less dangerous, less risky, and uh, maybe require low risk, low risk, how uh, low physical effort, and uh, maybe undertaking by people who want to passive activities. And I give you some example here. Uh, you know, hard adventure, you know, crumb the rock, and I see, you know, skydiving and bungee jump. But for the sub adventure, you can be go bushwalking, do some photographer, you canoe, you know, you walk into the forest, admire all the nature, and the track walk is not climb or not uh, risk, something like that. And that is a sub adventure. So here that the way of how can we make adventure activity become wellness tourism? Many, many argue with me that how can we make, how can we make adventure to become wellness? Because adventure tourism is very risky. So in my opinion, not just only activities risky, it's about the destination and the development and the sustainable and the activity that you provide for them. Destination development will not destroy our environment. How to preserve nature, avoid cutting tree down, that is sustainable. You walk and then you enjoy the uh, activities or you're not adventure from killing wildlife, you know, award or hunting the game, safe for security and physical. And the activities must support spiritual well-being. For example, if, you know, some destination you have go for adventure, come on, hunting. You know, you talk about go to, if you can get the, the, the biggest animals, you can get the award. And in some country, we have that adventure tourism by go hunt animal. And then you come out with a, a hundred of the animal being killed. And then you give the award and then you celebrate. And then you sharing people and give the, the medal and you get the money. And that is not wellness adventure tourism. Adventure tourism must not kill the animal, must not harm the, uh, must help together. When you walk into the forest, you know, you bring back your rubbish. You uh, consider about uh, how can you help the reserve, the, the destination. So I see many, many countries I've been, the system of rubbish, you know, co collect the rubbish, people take it out, but some country you still throw away in, in the forest. So the wellness tourism have to be uh, educate people when you go to the forest, you need to understand that whatever the garbage you bring in, you have to bring out as well. And uh, support the spiritual is mean that you have to create the surrounding area that you can sit in there and then you can discover yourself, you know, for example, I've been to the, the mountain and I uh, also do many at, um, meditation as well as yoga and then as well as walking up until you reach to the top. Um, the activities, you know, during you walk, you will see local and ethnic group. We can support them. This is the wellness. You know, you bring local income. You may be contact with local, okay, on day one, on day two, where you're going to reach. 
along the way, you will have community live there, the ethnic group. How can we bring them to have income from awareness group, provide some good food or bring them the money? They can have um, the development and in terms of economics and support them to uh, be living in the uh, countryside or living in the forest and they can have uh, income to support the family, educate them, include the quality of life for them as well. Um, also spiritual, you know, so I think that in the, in the uh, Nepal, you know, where, where I went there, I, I went there with the Buddhist man, I'll have the video here, just want you to hear yoga, Nepal yoga tracking program, and now I'm here at the Buddha Stupa, Bohari Tessai, a holy land, a holy place. I am here almost the end of the program and I found that I am very relaxing. My spiritual has been fulfilled with a lot of energy and I really thank you to the Astronga Yoga Nepal School, my master Rupa and Sanju who look after me very well and this program is wonderful and if you would like to have spiritual renewal like me and spiritual retreat that's most important for our life please come and join our program yoga tracking activities and retreat and this program is actually is uh, one of a good example of a wellness destination uh, sustainable by using yoga trip activities you walk along the track and you practice your yoga and then you have meditation and you enjoy environment and then you reach to the top and then you have your self actualization and again and i say it you know depend on the ability another uh, strategy proposed that i have been written in the book chapter and already published so it talking about strategic approach to spiritual tourism destination branding development among the millennial uh, tourists so what i propose is there are three main components to develop wellness, spiritual wellness de destination. Uh, spiritual tourism, you're talking about functional attributes. You have to think about, you know, the place have to be peaceful. You have to give some service quality, you know, human basic need, accommodation and food and water. And again, this one, they don't need five luxury star hotel. They don't need to have a big soft pillow or they don't need to have uh, internet and everything can be connected. But because you go to live in the forest, you need to live with the nature, comfortable basic need, and that is good for them. And this is from my study. But the most important thing that uh, good leadership, if you go anywhere, you need to have, uh, especially spiritual leadership. You know, you, you can have uh, people to give you, guide you about being, uh, when you do meditation or when you do uh, yoga or when the, even when you do some other activities, that is very important. But nowadays, in my study, it's qualification of leadership is still lacking. So in the future, I, I propose that we need to develop more leader for wellness, not just about spiritual, in terms of, you know, about food. So even, even the food every single day now, they say that, oh, we provide you healthy food, but sometimes when I see ingredient, that's not healthy. Or oh, we have healthy food, you have to do uh, a french fry, you have to do chips, you know, you have to do deep fried uh, uh, fish. So that is not healthy. The concept of the people, they use the word and then you... Um, uh, falling for that but when you see the process and it's not about uh not at all about the process of well-being so that we need to educate that activities you need to provide some activity that serve for the wellness so another another important destination for uh spiritual tourism is about psychology create that image and feeling you know, to stimulate them to joy when they see something like wellness or symbol or any logo, make people want to go and make create something in their mind. So, for example, like if you talk about uh, Thailand, you know, one in the famous is we have massage, Thai massage and spa. When we talk about Thai massage, my study uh, revealed that the most important and the most famous in Thailand is about Thai massage. And also it's about spa. 
because firstly, the unique way of doing that, and also the uh, a special of the service quality in our in in our uh, business, and that because of our culture. And the last one, spiritual tourism uniqueness is about wellness activities, experience well-being. You have to make those attribute for them and respond to physical, mental, social, and emotional. And also the festival and the event, meditation festival, yoga festival, religion ceremony. And I believe that many, many countries, if you go back to have a look at your own festival, you know, it will be linked into some kind of wellness, maybe food, maybe religion, you know, maybe some other uh, festival that we can use to promote that. And this is one of a strategy approach that I have I, I, uh, written in the book and also the some research that had been conducted. Um, why use local wisdom? So this one is very important. I use the word local wisdom for creative tourism a lot. Local wisdom means, for example, something that is uh, knowledge that we create in the old day and we use that for living and to survive. You know, it's a basic knowledge, a skill gained from living uh, to balance with nature. And local wisdom is related to culture in the community and it's accumulate, you know, and pass on to the generation and generation. Wisdom come from experience and it's come from real integrated with the body, environment and spirit. It show relationship of human, human, human nature and human and supernatural, something that we are known, but we believe and we value that. Uh, the most important thing that local wisdom, I think, is related to respect of the elders and their life experience and is unique in each own country. In Thailand, north of Thailand and south, southern part of Thailand, local wisdom is different because we've been living in different environment. Maybe local wisdom in Japan and uh, in Indonesia or in other country, you will have all that local wisdom. How can we bring that? to promote as a wellness. Okay, um, this is one example. We, I went to the uh, community-based tourism in the up country and uh, they provide me with the spa. They built, you know, the room there and you can go in there, you know, my apology to, to uh, open, peering open my, my body. This is a, this is a dress we use but we are in uh, local. So you know what they use in here? They have a very uh, authentic stop. And then in that, um, in that there, they have 19 herbs. And then we inhale of that. You know, the, 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 the people in the villager, they have knowledge about that. They tell us what kind of 19 herbs doing to our body. We go in there, you know, I pay only $2. 50 baht or $2, we stay there and after we finish, you know, we have a herbal drink and at the end of the night, you know, we enjoying that. So this is in local. So I think that this is one of a sample of uh, any local village can do it. We can get real authentic. We can get uh, help the people in that community to earn the money. We go in there that night, we go five person. So, you know, five person, $2, $10 for them, they can live on for a week. And the people are so happy. Basically, they don't think about money too much because all those herbs, they can pick it on from the yard. But how can we increase the value of their backyard into the wellness and be rich and value for the tourists? And this is one of example that we, we've been doing exploring research in the community. You know, and uh, and this one, you know, like the, the, this is what we have in our country. I think maybe they have in Indonesia as well, or I'm not sure, but I think you, you probably know. And then we turn that into the spa. We use this as a spa. We're sitting there and then, you know, the cost is very cheap. So less investment. Uh, this is one of uh, quality development model for the spa tourism. And I done the, a, a, a conduct a research for the government. Uh, uh, funding, the government fund our, our project. And this is just a strategic plan. Uh, this one about spa and health development to increase the 
uh, service quality, you know, so you're talking about, you need to consider about planning, you know, understand the behavior in, 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 uh, inside the circle there. You have to understand the tourist uh, decision-making, you know, that we plan what make them to decide to come, you know, they look at the service quality and during that they stay there, what they want, you know, when they go back home, how they feel about the service, they want to come back. We need to think about the service quality. You need to think about the platform, you know, in, um, in the stakeholders, you need to work together. You need to share data. You need to um, uh, work in collaborate together. Like in here, open wellness tourist data, the people can use. Consider about internal and external environment. You know, you're talking about internal, you have to develop the skill, uh, human resources. You have to talk about law, law and regulation, the environment, you know, social, culture, and then economic and uh, politics. So this, this platform that I propose to the Thai government to develop the SPA in Thailand, and uh, there may be some more detail later if you'd like to do. So this one I'm talking about, you know, I'm going into the yoga trip. Uh, you can go to do that. You know, you don't have to do extreme. You maybe go to the short walk for the uh, a higher uh, thousand level or maybe just a environment based camp. But you enjoy the activity. You don't have to be extreme. You don't have to be able to do yoga. You don't have to be able to extreme physical fit. But you want to enjoy that you can start from zero. So for some people that are already advanced, you know, you can increase that. I would encourage that if you are a service provider, you are the new future service provider, uh, think about provide some that activities can people can enjoy, the people can love about that. It may be a niche market, but in my opinion, it will be grow more and more. People need to have my recovery. People to have, want to enjoy in nature. People want to see something different. You know, after the COVID-19, Thailand, from 1st July, we will open the country. This is what the announcement from the health department. We will open the country for no any requirement or any condition. No Thailand pass application registration, no asking about your um, uh, um, uh, vaccine. You know, So I think that it will be people increasing, they will hunger for travel. So I presume that service and product need to be provide and in response to the demand. And this is one of them in my in my opinion. Um, yoga tracking, you know, when I go there, I went with the uh, Nepalese monk, you know, two of them that there's a monk and we walk together, you know, and then we practice. During we walk, you know, we practice and we tired, but we have a good fun. We don't feel tired, you know, we, we enjoying that. And after we walk, we tired, we have a rest, we do meditation, we have some uh, pause. And then after that, we keep walking. And that is, is the, the most enjoyable. Uh, this one is a study that I've done with my the student in Thailand, yoga tourism destination development. The purpose that we have, it's in here, how you develop that. There are, are, are three main components that you have to use to apply when you develop. You're talking about core resources and supporting resources. And the most important thing, the role of the stakeholders. The core resources, you're talking about the authentics of the activities, the experience of the instructor, the other activities that you can provide in addition of the yoga tourism, service quality that is very important. The destination have to be attraction, but have to be based on your geography, reputation of a destination as well. Uh, the most important thing for the stakeholder, there are three main things that they file. Yoga studio owner or the instructor, the nonprofit organization, the government need to support, and also the profit organization, for example, like the accommodation and the restaurant that you need to provide for them. The support of the resources for the yoga tourism is, you know, about the variety of the yoga, uh, promoting yoga destination, uh, some facility, for example, equipment, you know, for the to support the activities and uh, maybe uh, different budget of, of the accommodation from low budget to a higher and the accessibility. And this is fun on the result of the research project. In terms of the healthy food, I propose about slow food tourism. Many, many people understand what slow food is, but some people is still very new. One of the projects that my PhD and I be doing now, we're we doing 
destination in May to develop slow food tourism. Slow food means good, clean, fair. Good means that food has to be tasty and is produced in just a way, maximize flavor, connecting to geography and then a culture region. Eat in a season, you know. Clean food is about without chemical and preserve and local, maybe come from local. Fair is mean that produce in socially sustainable way, emphasis on social and also fair with the farmer, you know, you not take advantage. You know, some so many nowadays you you go to buy potato from farmer, you you put the price like 50 cents per kilo per kilo, and then you go to sell in the shopping center about two or three dollars. And that is not the same way. In this low food destination, we want you to go to buy direct from farm, give them a fair price and also a fair wages to the people who are working in the industry as well. And the concept of slow food tourism. Uh, experience development, active aging. This is one of the uh, projects that I'm doing. You know, how can you develop activities for the people who are 58 and above to have happy life when they travel for wellness tourism? Uh, this is some of the model. Wellness tourism and active aging 50 plus motivation. You know, so the first of them, the first of the study that they found that you're gonna have to the, the person of uh, the, the active aging that we have goal, you know, what in, what is that goal in their life and what experience they have and what they are interested in the future. And then you have to uh, understand that they said they want to improve their health, you know, they want to, to have self-fulfillment. I think this is the, the, the opinion of the 58 aging. And then uh, the level of their wellness activities, they, they are separate into three levels. They have some passive, you know, they have moderate and then they're active. So this is a characteristic of the 50 aging tourists related to the, the wellness. So many people are, you know, because in terms of physical fitness, some of them could not do active, but they can do passive or they can do moderate. So we are as a service provider, we are as an educator, we need to understand their behavior and then that we can respond to their expect they respond to this tourist group and then they can fulfill their desire. And that is uh, at the end of the day, they can achieve their four main um, uh, attribute, you know, like physical well being to prevent disease, maintain the fitness. Mental is COVID straight, life balance, happiness. Social well being is to be accepted. Social in the with family, friends, local, you know, and emotional is create positive. Uh, mood in their in their life. Um, sustainable, you know, the the study finding of my some of my research said, if you will build destination of wellness, it have to be the sustainable. You know, it community quality of life well being. You need to consider about tourism doesn't bring negative uh, impact to local, doesn't bring negative impact to the environment. You have to support culture, wisdom, local and culture, improve individual, uh, adapt in variable of local, you know, consider proper tourism, you know, a wellness tourism destination. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, uh, four activities that we need to, um, to cover. Um, so that at almost last, overall of uh, whatever we want to develop, it will not be success if we not consider our own health well-being. I believe that before you will give uh, wellness to people, before you will give a wellness to destination, yourself have to be considered that most important thing. In my opinion, sound mind, sound body, before we develop others' people, well-being, wellness tourism, we must look after ourselves first. We understand ourselves first, how to make ourselves well-being. Otherwise, we won't understand others, how they need. And that is, is my uh, recommendation, you know. So the five well-being that we need to consider, as I mentioned since the, the earlier, you know, for example here, like well-being, physical, you know, mental. So I have summarized in the model here. Physical well-being at, mean that activities that is healthy lifestyle, and is among the most important aspect for promoting physical fitness, health, and well, well, wellness. 
mental well-being is referred to the state which allow individuals to realize their ability, cope with the normal state of life, work productively, fruitfully, and make contribution to their community. Emotional well-being is referred to emotional quality of an individual in everyday experience. The frequent and intensity and experience of joy, stress, sadness, anger, affection make one life pleasant or unpleasant. It includes that positive, high self-esteem. Social well-being for individual is referred to how people want and like to be accepted, more are concerned for the others, friendly, society, supportive, why others feel afraid to be disconnected from society and wish freedom from the feeling of loneliness. So how can you give hand if you are able to do that? The last one is spiritual well-being is referred to religion or non-religion. These practice being complemented by rich natural environment setting. People need to have spiritual well-being through meditation. Time is silent session with spiritual director and walk into you know whatever activities that related to uh, spiritual and that is the most important thing so my final conclusion you know about the uh, wellness that i propose you know for example that philosophy of my improvement love kindness compassion sympathetic joy and equanimity so you need to give that to yourself first start from yourself, maybe from today, slowly, slowly doing that. I think that you cannot do immediately for those who did not realize, and some of you maybe already started, congratulations. And after that, we put hand in hand together and we, we will develop together. So in summary, I would say that wellness tourism is very important for post uh, pandemic. We need to consider about trend and including aging, demographic change, global climate change, environment, and the use of IT, new product and service for health need to be in place. Understand each country has different uniqueness. Bring those things and develop that and provide that for the people who can use to maintain their health while they travel. They travel, enjoy leisure, and go home with health well-being. The activities that I propose, you need to consider sport for health, spa and massage, healthy food, and spiritual retreat. Example case study that I propose, adventure wellness tourism, spiritual tourism, and spa. And also last but not least, sound mind in sound body. All successful lives start from quality of health well-being. And may I finish my uh, talk for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you so much from Anne for very comprehensive presentations, not only the concepts, but also the practical because you are the doer and also the researcher. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And now let's move to the other session. That is a Q&A. And I have seen in the chat box, there is a, a questions. Okay, uh, this is from Devia. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, Prof. M, Devita from uh, Tourism Management Semester 4. She has two questions considered to wellness tourism. The first one is how did Thailand able to adopt the changing concepts into wellness tourism before and after pandemic? And then uh, the second one is with the new concepts development strategy, how can the community adopt the new strategy that has been set? Is that the community ready to face the new changes that has been determined? Yeah, that's uh, the question from Anne. Okay, maybe I have I have a look in the first one. How did Thailand able to adapt the changing concept into running tourism before and after? Okay, I think um, maybe one thing is Thailand. We have uh, advantage, you know, because everyone everyone uh, we well known in terms of uh, spa, you know, and also about the massage. Even I go everywhere, I see the, the I, I I will see even Australia or in other country I will see Thai massage everywhere and spa you know so we have that form a long time as I said because our local wisdom of massage is is our unique activities and Thailand bring up this um, bring up this um, uniqueness to be a product to develop 
uh, as a destination. As I said before, before uh, COVID-19, Thailand have put wellness project or wellness uh, tourism development as a top urgent priority. So why we got the project to uh, funding to do a develop a spa. Uh, in terms of uh, practical, I think that we still also developing that. It, honestly, in my experience, I've been living in, in, in Thailand and involved with this research. There's still people heading to uh, learning and, and doing. Some people still don't understand exactly what the wellness tourism. And when I go to talk with entrepreneurs, I talk with the stakeholders and the people who willing to cater uh, wellness tourism, they're still learning. And I, I'm one of the consultants for the group of the tourist company that said, from after COVID-19, we want to promote our program as a wellness tourism destination uh, activities, but they don't understand the concept. So what we need to do now that we need to give knowledge to local, as I said from my study, locals still don't understand the concept. So what, what Thailand try to do now is we are promote the uh, local, you know, like TAT try to come up with the idea of a wellness uh, tourism destination, but uh, they're still on the way. You know, we, we try to uh, get it from local. We, we try to get community to be part of that. I give you one example of the project that we've been doing last year. They're talking about uh, one sub district and uh, one university. It means that the researcher from the university will go to be consulting, helping or nursing or like baby sister to the local community, what they want to develop. And one of the village that I was uh, advice they want to do wellness destination and they want to do the retirement wellness school for the people in their in their community you know we, we're still doing that we're still doing that and yes in Thailand we're still on the way I think I think perhaps the the in my recommendation is a big massive organization development doesn't work we need to start from local we need to start from a small scale and we need to put that uh, uh, power together and then we make it happen in a small scale and then we develop and we expand. And what I see in Thailand now, we, we come from the top and then we try to go down, but it sometimes it takes time. Yeah, I think, I'm not sure that I, I answer that, that question. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's uh, answer for Delphia. And now let's have Mr. Rustam Sumarna. He has a question and he would like to ask directly to you, Prof. Anne. Please, uh, Mr. Rustam. Thank you, Ms. Titing. Good afternoon, Prof. Anne. Good afternoon. Thank you for your sharing. Very interesting topics, very comprehensive. Uh, I'm Rustam, a student of tourism management. I also work for uh, and travel company specialist in pilgrimage and outbound tour. I would like to ask Prof. N, as we know, some of the millennials' characteristics are bored quickly, want things to be instant and to focus on their gadgets. Therefore, can we offer wellness tourism to the millennials? What are the tips to approach or propose, propose the offer to them? That's my question. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, for Arustam. Please, Prof. M, to answer Arustam's okay, question. Thank you for Very the question. Um, that, this is a good question. I think I, I think I have that very insightful answer. One of my students, they are doing a research focused on millennial. And the most important thing, as we know, you know, because nowadays they have used IT. And one of my students, she doing, uh, they call wellness virtual, wellness virtual application. Okay. So she, she, in, she now in the final stage of doing her PhD. What she do is maybe I can share, maybe I can share because there's nowadays people are using smartphone. For, for their in, in their life, you know. So what can we do was my student, 
she created the application related to wellness activities. One, for example, she said, well, we have, uh, we have a destination. Let's say we're talking about healthy food. So we have the application and they go and see. And when they see that this is, this is a very good for their health, you know, they can order or they can, uh, they, they, they can, they can see all the details. What we, what we have to do is we have to own the, the, the website. We have to create that website. And then most of the stakeholders, for example, if I have, if I have a restaurant cater healthy food, right? So those people who are always on the smartphone, if they're willing, if they're willing to find something healthy, real healthy, you can create the website and then you put the content that related to wellness. For example, if I said, if you come to Thailand, if you participate with us in this destination, what the activity do we have? What kind of food do we have? What, the, uh, what, what can you participate and increase your fitness ability? One of my students, he also doing a destination, a destination smart tourism wellness destination. He doing persuasion model. How can we motivate the people P uh, 50 years old? This is a millennial, uh, millennial age group. He said that I go to collect data from the participant who are age 50 and below, which is a millennial group. Millennial now is about 25 to 40. Okay. So these people is the person who already been jumped into the wellness. And then we will use a smart, uh, uh, we, we said we're going to develop a smart destination for wellness. And one of the most important thing is using the smartphone and IT. And not only about we provide the information in that website, we are have virtual as well. You know, for example, I give you for example, uh, in Thailand, we have the website that now we cannot go to the destination. And then the people sit at home, they feel uh, frustrated, you know, they, they, they want to go out and activities, but we use virtual tour, but by using a real scene, we have the elephant farm. And then the, the stakeholders, the stakeholders said, okay, we are open the website. If you are at home, you want your kid to see the elephant. So they actually go to that website and then we open the, the real virtual tour and then uh, the kid can see the real elephant. And then the parents said, okay, we want to buy some uh, uh, sugar can. We want to buy banana for the elephant. Can you feed them? You know, actually the farm owner said, okay, this is your banana, your banana. This is your sugar can. Okay, we will, we will feed the elephant on behalf of you. And then they send the money, you know, for, for something like that. So the wellness tourism can, can do the same thing. Once we have advertised uh, very attractive, you know, first of all, you have to go to learn about how can we create website more attractive, especially what the content we need to put in if is make it related to the wellness, but not just advertise. So I want to be a real wellness content. So uh, and mainly the millennial group is the most important in this current trend. As you mentioned that exactly, millennial is the bring income because they are the early age of working. Some of them already pursue their career. Some of them will start a new family and they need to have, you know, they enjoy their life after they've been studying for, for a long time and then they get the career. They start their family. They need to enjoy entertain family. So the most important thing that I think that make some use, use some of IT, but have to be real, but have to understand the concept of wellness. I hope that I can answer your, your uh, question. Thank you, Thank you. Prof. Ang. Hopefully it's answering your question, Pak Rustam. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All Thank right. you, Prof. Ang. Thank you okay. very much. Uh, I'm so sorry. I cannot read all questions, but Prof. Ang, is it possible if I sent to you by email the rest question? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then maybe uh, this from uh, Gracila is the last question. She shared that your presentation is very good. <laughs> Gracila is also students of uh, tourism management. And her question is, okay, I would like to make the short one. How to make the sustainable health tourism as a top priority so that people can know the importance of this health tourism into a very useful commercial value. Okay, this is from Gracila. Yeah, I think this is very challenging. 
you know, very shallow and everywhere talking about sustain to, sustainable tourism for years. But the thing is, you need to get a powerful person to agree with you by start from yourself. And, and I said, in my opinion, from bottom to top is the most important thing. We will be able to sustain without support that is not possible. So that we have to start from bottom. The bottom, what I mean is local community, the authority and about yourself. And the most important thing, we need to have leader. We need, we need to have a good leader and we need to really actually work, not talking and put it up and okay, bye-bye. You know, I saw that many. And I, I talked to people and said, um, to get the top to work, it's clock in the way. You know, there are many policy, you have to eliminate those policy. I mean, the policy like, if you're gonna do something or you have to get permission, you have to get about three level of uh, approval, you know? So in my opinion, give power to local authority, you can go out and do it. Like I me, mean, when I'm doing, I don't, I don't go to the top, but I get the people in the community. So you know, like I go to the um, in Nepal, and I I learn so many of the com local community. They are uh, concerned about sustainable and uh, stakeholders. You know, they work together, and I I, I use that pattern to be uh, as a sustainable tourism. Like you have to focus if you want to do wellness, especially. Wellness cannot be success without sustainable. For example, you will use local wisdom of wellness. You will use knowledge of the people who uh, have, have knowledge about medicine. You know, like, how do you know that leaf is killing your stomach ache? How do you know that leaf can stop your diarrhea? So if you not support those people, you're not going to be sustained. Sustainable is not only about cut the tree and make the, the nice environment. It's about culture, it's about local wisdom, it's about uh, spiritual knowledge, it's about to extend um, uh, the, the knowledge in the authentic way. So right. firstly, my, my, my answer is you need a good leader, you need to start from local authority, you need to get eliminate those um those permission and those acceptance and those approval or whatever to make it easier and go out and do it and then you you need to be uh, consistent the most important thing that you know the people come oh you know you 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 are everyone want to do uh, sustainable when the project finished when the money finished mm -hmm. it's gone and this All is right. what i see from my experience I hope I okay. answered my question. Uh, <laughs> Thank you question. so much from Anne. I'm so sorry, Pak Budi and Sally, your question cannot be read, but don't worry. I would like to send those questions uh, to Prop Anne by uh, her email. All right. Okay, so from our discussion today, I take some important notes that the first one, when tourism is now well developed in several countries, including in Asia, and then wellness tourism is not only physical well-being, but also involving mental, social, spiritual, and also emotional. And the last one is some kinds of wellness tourism activities have a strong, very relevant, and support the sustainable tourism development. Thank you so much, Prof. Anne. Now, the time Thank for you. the awarding time. Please, the uh, team IT to share the e-certificate, and please, the head of Skepariya Pariyapari, Professor Dr. Nok Mariani, to deliver the e-certificate. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Ibu uh, Ketua, suaranya belum hidup, Ibu? Masih di unmute suaranya? Okay. Okay. Bisa ya? Oke, okay, thank you uh, Prof. An, very interesting, comprehensive and inspiring uh, because many countries have wellness tourism. This uh, depend on uh, geographical setting, environmental and pilgrim, religion, I think, lifestyle and local wisdom. This is a local vision very uh, many to Indonesia and inspiring to research. <laughs> I would like to give uh, a certificate of appreciation to Associate Professor N. Aston PhD from National Institute of Development Administration, Thailand. Thank you very much for sharing experience. I hope we can do collaboration with the other program like is uh, your research interest. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's my great honor. Thank, thank you so much. Too. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And it is for me. Yeah, thank I'm, you I'm for the committee. Yeah. And from and from Nok Mariani is uh, her expertise in the tourism geography. <laughs> so I think it will be interesting if both of you have in collaboration. <laughs> yeah, we can we can do yes. something. Yeah, internationally. Yeah, and okay. uh, I I would love to do that. And I would love to share all my material if you need okay. anything. Thank you. Yeah. And behind this big program, actually, Miss uh, uh, Prof. M, there is wonder uh, wonder woman, Ibu Novariana. Okay. Yes. The head of the committee, Miss uh, Ibu Thank Novariana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Aston. Thank you for sharing your uh, knowledge you so of much. students here. Thank, so thank have so fun much. day. We can collaborate. Uh, yeah, sure. I hope that I can go to Indonesia now. So I think I've been giving a, a lecture for four or five lecture for the past three years. I think oh. I, I I would love to go to Indonesia and I, I nice. love to enjoy. Yeah. Oh, so you, uh, I went in Bandung. So we can meet then. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think we will have we will have conference in Bali. Mm. I think in uh, September or October, I can't remember. I think we will go there. I think oh, you may okay. be part of that. I think, yeah. I actually right. think I would like to be there in Bali. Thank you. And committee, please, before we have the closition. Can we have take picture together with Prop Ann and also the other participants? Okay, slide one. Uh, would you mind opening your camera, please? All right. Okay, slide one. One, two, three. Team IT ready? Ready. Okay, now the second slide, please. Because we have five slides here. And then the third one. Fourth slide and the fifth slide is the last one. All right, once again, I guess moderator, thank you so much for your time for Pan, Prop Nock, and also the other committee. Uh, we, we, are, we are having, what is it? Insightful sharing for today. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon and uh, see you in the next session. Thank you for listening. Hopefully, we can join together again soon. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.